All right, let's talk about the kettlebell Russian swing. So there is a lot to talk about here. So stay with me. This is a hinge movement. It's a strict hinge focused movement, but the key here is to getting a kettlebell swing of any kind is rhythm. There is a point where you are waiting for the bell. And then there is a point where once the bell is loaded up, you're exploding. So there's waiting and then there's the explosive part. So let's talk about the setup first and foremost. I'll start by facing you. You want the kettlebell out in front of you. That's how you're going to pick it up. You're going to hike it. It needs to be far enough out in front of you that you can create some force when you pull it up. Your feet need to be a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. Soft bend in the knees, proud chest, shoulders should be pulled down and back, and you're going to flick your tailbone back. So we're going to hinge down, reaching out for that weight. Again, my shoulders are staying pinned back. Even though I'm reaching out, I'm not dropping the shoulders. I'm keeping them pulled down and back, proud chest. So I'm going to reach for the kettlebell. I'm going to make sure that I've got it out far enough. I'll show you from the side that I can create force as I pull it up, but it's not so far out that it is creating this to where I have this uh, negative uh, spine where my shoulders are below my hips. I don't want that. So I'm going to pull it back till I get it right where I want it. Shoulders slightly above the hips. I'm going to pull with as much force as I can create and I'm going to pull it high between my legs and then I'm going to drive my hips forward and let my arms do whatever they do. I am not moving this weight with my arms. They are the attachment to the kettlebell, but that's about it. It's going to be a soft bend in my elbows. I'm not strict. I'm not locking the elbows out, but I'm also not intentionally bending them. It's just a loose hold. Um, and the grip on the kettlebell is also a loose hold. So it's going to look like this. You're going to hike it high between your legs. And then again, drive the hips forward and the kettlebell flies up. So I'm going to face you again. I want to talk about where the kettlebell goes as you hike it up and each and every swing. So right here, this is the triangle that you are aiming at each and every rep. You do not want your wrists going any lower than that triangle. You actually want your wrists hitting your inner thigh as high as you can get without hurting yourself, if you know what I mean. So again, I'll show you. Even on that first swing, here's what we're not doing. We're not swinging it down here, ever. Don't swing the kettlebell down there. I'm swinging it high between my legs and then driving my hips forward. And that's what's moving the kettlebell. Loose grip on the kettlebell, soft bend in the elbows, driving that kettlebell forward. Each and every rep, I'm keeping my wrists right there at my inner thigh, right, right below the, uh, the family jewels. Some other stuff to think about with your kettlebell swing is when you stand up, you are not gonna lean back. There's no sense in hyper extending your back. All that does is put extra load right here. We don't need any more of that than is already naturally going to happen. So when we stand up out of that swing, we're going to squeeze our butt cheeks together and lock our hips out. And that's where that ends. I'm not leaning back. My shoulders stay pulled back, proud chest, but all my whole goal is to lock the hips out. So it looks like this. and not like this. Just stand up, lock your hips out, just like this. And if you don't have a heavy enough kettlebell, it's gonna be really hard to feel this because this kettlebell is weightless right here and then it pulls me down. That's how I know when to drop. The kettlebell is telling me. So if I don't have a heavy enough kettlebell, I'm not going to feel that. And if the kettlebell, if I can pick up the kettlebell with my hands and I'm just using shoulders and arms, it's not a kettlebell swing. 
it has to be from the hips. And that is our kettlebell swing. I could talk about this all day. So just a quick note on the kettlebell swing, um, whether it be Russian, American, or any variation of kettlebell swings. This movement is one of the most effective, uh, powerful movements that you can do. It's also one of the most dangerous movements that you can do. So it's really important um, that you pay attention to what you're doing. And if you can, to have someone look at you or film yourself and send it to your coach to make sure that you're doing this movement right. And let's talk about where you're supposed to be feeling this movement. It is a glute and hamstring dominant movement because it's a hinge. All hinge movements are. That's the goal of the hinge is to load up your glutes and hams. So as you drive back, that's where you should feel tension is hams and glutes. Something else you can do as you're moving to help create that tension is imagine there's a split in the earth between your feet and you are gonna grip the ground with your feet and try to rip the earth apart. And that locks your feet in, that locks your legs in and it creates tension all the way down the line so that you are able to properly load up the glutes and hams.